the craziest The White Lotus Season 2 theories. While numerous franchise television properties had their debuts last fall, including House of the Dragon, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, and Andor, HBO's dark comedy The White Lotus may have generated the most interesting fan theories. Similar to the first season, The White Lotus, Sicily, began with the aftermath of a murder, hinting that some of the characters we will meet won't survive to the end of the story. While there was only one fatality in the first season of The White Lotus, the initial first few minutes of season 2 hinted that there would be a more significant tragedy in the following episodes. Fans started to wonder which of these characters would pass away prematurely by the end of the season as disclosures kept piling up. Some of the hypotheses turned out to be true, like the ones that Tanya did die after Quentin betrayed her, Lucia did deceive Albie, and Daphne did show to be more cunning than she first seemed to be. Check out some of the fascinating and wackiest predictions made by the fans. However, some of the weirdest theories put up by viewers turned out to be untrue. Bert passes away naturally. Due to his deteriorating memory and frequent naps, Bert, the oldest member of the DeGrasso family, appeared to be exhibiting symptoms of disease. Dominic, Bert's son, had finally learnt to stand up to the father who had refused to apologize for his entire life, thus Bert was undoubtedly not getting any attention from him. Bert, however, returns from his vacation unharmed and as annoying as ever. Harper or Ethan kills Cameron in a program that focuses on exposing the vices of the upper class, Cameron is arguably the most despicable character. It was likely that one of the spillers would kill Cameron after sexually confronting Harper and pulling Ethan into a night of drugs and women. While Ethan and Harper both receive the joy of hitting Cameron in the water, neither of them actually have Cameron's blood on their hands. Instead, Harper gets the satisfaction of calling Cameron an idiot in front of him. Season 3 brings back Tanya. The reappearance of Tanya allowed Coolidge to give the character that had won her such fame a more sad story, even though there aren't any parallels to the first book in the White Lotus series. When Tanya learns that her husband Greg is complicit in a complex conspiracy to deceive her with Quentin, she experiences heartbreak all over again. Tanya's grisly demise at the bottom of the ocean puts an end to any notions that she would wind up serving as the web of the White Lotus world. Albie murders Lucia after she conned him. Albie is successful in persuading his father to settle Lucia's debt, but she doesn't stay around to thank him for very long. As many fans had anticipated, Albie's new relationship with the renowned hustler, Lucia, turns out to be a part of a plot. While some viewers expected Albie to finally lose his cool, in the end, he feels more heartbroken and ashamed than he does angry. The DeGrassos are connected to crime. The Godfather by Francis Ford Coppola has been subtly referenced in Sicily, and it's not simply because of the Italian setting. After discussing the movie's virtues with Portia, Bert, Dominic, and Albi resolve to search for their long-lost ancestors by going on a vacation that the Corleone family would approve of. Could Dominic's Hollywood profession be a front for a mafia organization? Some fans had theorized that the DeGrasso family was even closer to the Corleone family. Considering Imperioli's involvement in The Sopranos, it would make sense. The DeGrasso's only offense ultimately turns out to be ignorance, and the visit to the Italian relatives turns out to be a red herring. The dead guests are people we've never met. Some people believe that White wouldn't choose anything too blatant because of all the characters that were at risk throughout the season. Perhaps these kinds of disputes, deceptions, and affairs are standard at these resort chains, and the actual victims are some of the other visitors, residents, or staff members with whom we haven't interacted. Even though Quentin and his cronies don't show up until halfway throughout the season, Tanya and they both meet a tragic end when their deadly scheme goes astray. Tanya's life is saved by Portia. One of the most intriguing relationships on the program is that between Tanya and Portia. Daphne has come to rely on Portia for emotional support, and when Portia falls in love while on their vacation, Daphne starts to feel jealous of her young helper. Some fans speculated that Portia would end up intervening to save Tanya from Quentin and bear the final cost because it appeared as though she had affection for her boss. Ironically, Tanya warned Portia over the phone that she shouldn't trust Jack, prompting her to start making plans to leave. 
The White Lotus is a number of things, including affluent people, drama, travel erotica, social commentary, and most importantly, a murder mystery. Season 2 of the HBO sensation debuted at the climax of the story, much like the first Emmy-winning episode did, with a flash-forward depicting the moment resort guest Daphne discovers a dead body floating in the Mediterranean outside of a Sicilian hotel. As the seven-episode season progressed, virtually every character on the program found a reason to commit murder, and many fan favorites are in danger. Don't worry, The White Lotus Season 3 has already been confirmed. So, the mystery is still on. And if you don't want to stay out of the loop, like the video and click the sub button so that we can keep you informed about any new info on the White Lotus.